Here now with reaction is South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. Senator, good to see you. By the way, the world is ending Thank in you. 12 years. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that's what I hear. <laughs> uh, all right, a lot of issues here. Um, how could anybody look in the eye of a parent that lost a kid yeah, from a heroin yeah. overdose and not say or say that this is manufactured or look in the face of an angel mom or dad, same issue there, and not even be willing to talk about the issue with the president when it's life and death, safety and security, and yeah. then to, you put out all of these demands. It makes it impossible. Well, what you don't have is uh, clips of Democratic senators saying this because they know it's a death blow to the party. President Trump made a brilliant political move and good for the country to go to the middle. Wall plus DACA plus TPS. I've had more Democratic senators talk to me in the last two days than talk to me in the last 30 days. The harder Nancy Pelosi goes left and the more Trump goes to the middle, we're going to get this thing solved. Well, tomorrow I can see Chuck Schumer lining mm -hmm. up all the Democrats to vote yeah. against that right. compromise plan. And again, right. TPA, DACA, right. Dreamers. Right. And, right. by the way, the House on the furlough, wanting to pay the furloughed employees, the Republicans, right. no Democrats supporting that either. So I guess that was a lie also. Well, what's going to happen? You'll have a vote tomorrow on President's plan that will get almost all Republicans, very few Democrats. We'll have Schumer's proposal that I'll vote against. Then the hard work starts. We had a meeting today with about eight Democrats and about eight Republicans. And, you know, Nancy Pelosi's become a nightmare for the Democratic Party. She seems unreasonable. She seems to have a dislike for the president that is hurting the country. Uh, and this idea of not letting the president speak is really overplaying your hands. So I want to let your listeners know that there's a reaction to this far left rhetoric in the Senate by more mainstream Democrats that I think will eventually allow us to get the wall funded and do some things for the DACA recipients and TPS recipients. There's a deal in the making, and the more extreme Nancy Pelosi gets, the more likely we'll have a deal. It can't include amnesty. You're going to lose every conservative supporter of the president, uh, but it it's won't. not included. The president was pretty it clear about not. that. I promise you it will not. Okay. Um, it seems like Nancy Pelosi is intimidated and afraid <laughs> of this new radical extreme element. Yeah, I think so. I think she fears that she will lose her position as speaker very quickly. Um, what is your take and interpretation on the Constitution, Article 2, Section 3? Well, I think the president has a lot of power. I mean, she can disinvite him to the House, but come to the Senate, Mr. President. There's plenty of places the president can choose to deliver the State of the Union. But here's the question for America. What kind of union do you want? Do you want a country that looks more like Venezuela and less like America? If you do, follow these hard left people. They're going to take you to the land where the government taxes everything uh, in its power. They control every decision in life. And you'll see Venezuela come here. This is what this whole election is going to be about in 2020. Do we go further left and become like, like Venezuela? Or do we become the America that all of us want us to be? So if I'm a Democrat, these people are defining my party in a way that gives it a very limited future in America, in my view. So the president, to me, obviously, and I agree with him, views this as life and death, safety yes. and security of the American people, stopping the heroin, yes. the 90 percent of the heroin in this country from coming across the border, fentanyl. Um, he's about life. and That seems like a principled, strong position, also part of his, when he, when he pledges to faithfully serve and protect the Constitution. That means it's people. He's the commander in chief as per right. the Constitution. What is the Democratic position? They don't want DACA. They don't seem to care about furloughed employees. Right. They don't seem to care about dreamers. Right. What, 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 are they, what is this fight about then for them? They want Trump to fail more than they want the country to win. A dollar for the wall. Does that make sense in light of the caravans that have been coming? A broken border is more dangerous to the country than a partial government shutdown. In their world, there is no ice. You get a dollar for the wall, and the Border Patrol agents are gassing children, not defending the country uh, uh, from an onslaught. So my view is that Democrats in the Senate are going to become more reasonable 
as these people define extreme positions. The president made a very smart move by putting on the table relief for DACA recipients, T TPS recipients, which the Democrats have been for for decades. Now let's see what kind of Democratic Party we've got. Do we have a Democratic Party that hates Trump so much they will say no to 1.1 million people having a better life? Or will we have some Democratic senators and some Democratic House members join with the president and me to solve this problem? You know, Time will tell. Look, the president, it seems, he, he does have other options. When we're dealing with drugs, yes, he does. gangs, cartels, yes. uh, human trafficking, drug trafficking, uh, real radical elements, and that's only the 2%. I believe the other 98% right. that don't respect our laws, but they come here for a better life for themselves and their families. I believe that. I haven't been down there a lot. So then the question is, when the president goes alone, national emergency, what happens next? Well, if I were him, I would use my power as commander in chief to build that wall because he promised to build it. Every Democrat has voted uh, for wall funding except when President Trump became president. But here's the way to go, I think. If I were the president, I would ask Nancy Pelosi if a bill passes the Senate that has wall funding, protection for DACA and TBS, TPS, would you take it up in the House? If she says yes, I would open the government for three weeks, let the Senate see if we can reach a deal, and if we can't, I would use the emergency powers as the commander-in-chief to bring this debacle to an end. Um, I'm not sure if he gives up his leverage, but if he's prepared to do the national emergency, he's, that means he's committed one way or the other yes. to getting this done. One way or the other. Senator, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Well, lawmakers in California haven't gotten around to fixing the state's infrastructure, its housing crisis, its homelessness, its vanishing middle class. But they are at the forefront of another fight rewriting grammar. Last week, the chair of the state Senate Judiciary Committee announced that only gender neutral pronouns would be permitted on her or rather their committee. So that we are using what my uh, grammat grammar teacher would have had a heart attack over. We are using the phrase they. My grammar teacher is long gone and I won't be hearing from her. Um, and if any of you... From them, exactly. From they. Jason Nichols is a professor of African-American studies at the University of Maryland and a frequent guest on this show. They join us now. <laughs> um, I assume you is still allowed, uh, so it's good to see you. Um, so, but I, I, I just, I'm really struck, this is a function of human nature, but the left is especially susceptible to it, that any dumb trend that comes along is accepted immediately and mindlessly by people who should like know Like MAGA that. hats? Uh, no, a lot of hats have a very specific, you, you may disagree with them, but like they're calling for the election of a specific person. But like all the dumb people decided one day, like uh, pronouns are bad. And then we just sort of go along with it. Why? Again, Tucker, I, I don't think that what the, they're saying is pronoun nouns are bad. Mm -hmm. They're saying that you should be referred to the way that you choose to be referred to. So someone who is uh, a man who identifies as a man, yes, we can call that person he. Someone who identifies as a woman, that person can be she. But the, a person who is gender non-binary, they can be they or shim or sheer or whatever pronoun okay. they choose. So in general, I kind of agree. I call people whatever they want to be called. You right. get married, you change your name, I'll call you by that name. Exactly. Whatever. I, I think that's your right. And, and, and out of respect, I, I go along with it. That's not what they're saying. They're saying that you're not allowed to use gendered pronouns. That's very different. Yeah, and, and, I, and I actually find that problematic. I, I believe that people should have the opportunity to choose what they want to be called. I mean, that's, that's the way, you know. But there's uh, a problem here. This is, look, this is California. So you've got more than 10 million people in California speak Spanish at home. Right. Spanish is a gendered language. Absolutely. That means it is structurally transphobic. <laughs> Will they allow Spanish to be spoken, again, a gendered language in the committee room? Well, there, there are people, at least in the United States, who are, uh, you know, there's Latino, Latina, and Latinx, so they're trying to make it a little more gendered. But, the, but that, well. that's in English. I mean, that's how English speakers describe it. But there's no effort to impose these ludicrous rules on Spanish. And by the way, why not call California Californics? I mean, if we're really kind of... <laughs> remaining consistent here. Yeah, well, I think California is the name of a place, and California can't choose uh, how it wants <laughs> to identify. But they're not letting us do In other words, in, does it strike you, again, I think we agree that if you say, you know, I'd really like you to call me this, out of politeness and decency, which I sincerely believe in, I will, okay? Right. But they're, 
forcing people to say something stupid Shouldn't that be the point where the rest of us say, yeah, I'm not playing well, see, along? Well, the, see, the problem is that you're calling that stupid. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think it's stupid to, to say, I mean, there were people many years ago who said, his name was Cassius Clay. We're not going to call him Muhammad Ali. That's stupid. And to me, it's like, no, whatever you want to be called, whatever you choose. Again, that's, that's again I'm with, I'm with that's I'm for calling Cassius Clay Muhammad Ali because he wants to be called that. He's not no Cassius problem. Clay. I He's agree. Muhammad no Ali. problem. This is for this is a command that requires people to refer to others who have not asked to be called this by a plural pronoun when it's a singular person. Right. It's grammatically incorrect, it's awkward, it's dumb. It doesn't serve the interests of anybody, and it applies to all of us, well, see, but everyone's too afraid to call it what it is, well, which look, is insane. First of all, language language is living and breathing. It changes, it shifts. If you listen to how people talked in the 1920s, they don't talk how they, they don't speak English the same way they speak English today. So, I mean... But isn't that an organic process? That's not because some terrified little bureaucrat decrees that you must say this on pain yeah, of punishment. I, 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 hey, we're in agreement about decreeing that you have to speak one way or, or use a, pro, a per, particular pronoun for everyone. I don't like mandating speech right, exactly. at all. So we're in agreement. So then let's very quickly assess like the response. Why We both agree with this. Why don't both of us next time we hear this say, you know what? No, I'm not playing along with your fantasy. Like, leave me alone, please. Well, no, I mean, are look, we afraid to do that? I think we're afraid I, to do that. No, I'm not afraid. I, if I were there, I would say, well, I prefer he. But, you know, I will call someone who wants to be called they, shim, sheer, whatever uh, pronoun you choose. Sheer? Yeah, that, that's another one. Um, okay. But not quite as popular. But if you want to... <laughs> Sorry. If you, you want to call, be called something. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Look, I agree. You know? I just don't think that we ought to be coercive. But they always get coercive, don't they? Yeah, I, and I think that that is problematic. Yeah, okay. The, the fire of freedom burns brightly in your heart, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Professor, great to see you. Thanks, Tucker. Always Thank fun. You.